Um, now look, usually at this time we have the Chairman's Award, a celebration of an individual's member's contribution. But not this year. For the 25th anniversary, the board decided, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to do something else, a little surprise. Instead, we decided we wanted to celebrate the achievement of the club itself, and thus to have a chairman's toast to be proposed by Peter Brennan. Um, but as a particular surprise, as a particular surprise, ladies and gentlemen, and actually totally unbeknown to Peter Brennan standing behind me, is that he's actually not up here to propose the toast, really. You see, the board has mutinied. We've gone behind the chairman's back to create the Lansdowne Trophy, to mark the awarding of the club's first life membership. And to present the Lansdowne Trophy, I call upon Ambassador at Large, Richard O'Brien, a great friend of the club, and of Peter O'Brien, of Peter Brennan. Richard O'Brien, could you come and do what we have managed to keep a secret from the chairman of the Lansdowne Club, who was actually across absolutely bloody everything that happens and make sure it does. But this one, we've caught him and embarrassed him because he hates surprises. That's what makes it so good. Richard O'Brien. Peter, as I saw you put away that wonderful script, which is, I mean, would you like to step that towards me? Because this is going to be much better than this script. Thank you very much. Um, look, Minister Fitzgerald, Minister Kelly, um, it really is marvellous to be back in the Lansdowne Club um, and to have once again the opportunity to say, Banachtina Fela Porik, have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Minister, you'll have heard Luca Bloom in that last song with such emotion and vitality say, you couldn't have come at a better time. Minister, you couldn't have come at a better time to come to the Lansdowne Club, to this, the largest celebration, the largest um, lunch anywhere in the world, hosted on this day, organized on this day. I hope you've had a wonderful occasion, our celebration as much as I think all of us have had uh, and enjoyed having you here. But um, my job today, as it had been uh, initially suggested to me, was to attempt to say something, to pay tribute on your behalf to a truly remarkable person. A person who is both inspired and inspiring. Indeed, to say that he is a fantastic person is not for a moment to borrow from the title of a particular furniture company um, with which he has a certain, as opposed to a rather uncertain relationship. Nor is it to suggest that we in the Lansdowne Club snatched up uh, some special deal on offer president. Rather, no, it is to suggest that we did indeed find ourselves gifted with a very special deal in a remarkable person who has guided this club with vision as well as with vigor, with enormous dedication and with boundless energy. For Peter Brennan has served the Lansdowne Club with all of those outstanding qualities and characteristics, as well as with a quiet genius and an unrivaled generosity of spirit over the last 25 years. Initially as a foundation member and soon thereafter I think, Peter, since 1993, as our president. And indeed, actually reflecting on that thought, Peter is probably now the longest surviving, uh, democratically elected, of course, president anywhere in the world. But um, I have to say, thank you, I have to say, when I came to Australia, um, that was before they started appointing real ambassadors, Peter was my foremost mentor and guide and indeed, as he has been, the mentor and guide to successive generations of Irish diplomats, including indeed to our own highly respected Morchin O'Fanning as well, as to our present dedicated and impressively active 
Consul General Katrina Inglesby. And Peter remains, for all of us, I know, the authoritative advisor uh, on all of the rich possibilities and opportunities of doing business within Sydney and in this great state of New South Wales, and indeed across other places in Australia as well. But Peter has also been quietly and passionately a believer in the message so inspiringly conveyed a little while ago by Minister Fitzgerald in her address, that achieving a modern and progressive Ireland is not only uh, the work, uh, is not only one of working for peace and prosperity at home, important indeed and crucial as those are, it is also one of reaching out to Ireland's family and friends across the international community in ways which are purposeful, imaginative and relevant. And for Peter, this was an essential element of the dynamic vision which he worked to achieve with both focus and skill as he transformed the Lansdowne Club into the vibrant organisation we celebrate today. A club which has maintained the central relevance uh, to uh, being of central relevance to its expanding membership and at the same time one which has contributed both depth and direction I think words that Minister Fitzgerald also used to virtually all aspect of the extraordinary and exceptional contemporary relationship between Australia and Ireland the huge presence here today is ultimately the validation and celebration of Peter's commitment to serve the interests of our club membership. And indeed, the presence of the Australian Prime Minister with so many other major personalities from the political establishment of Australia, um, together with Minister Fitzgerald, is a far more eloquent tribute than ever I could pay to Peter's and to the Lansdowne Club's enormous contribution to strengthening the, and, uh, the vibrancy of our bi bilateral relationship. However, in making this presentation on your behalf um, to a great friend, to a dedicated Irish and Australian patriot, I know that he would wish me to mention a range of other wonderful people who have, in fact, been vital to him over the years. I think, indeed, of his Vice President, uh, Yvonne Lebas, of that indomitable and indestructible Theresa Keating, the marvel of Irish entrepreneurship and dedication in Sydney, but essentially, uh, I know that you would all want me to pay a very special tribute to the most important person in Peter's life, to his talented wife and the essential partner in all his successes, the wonderful Patricia. And now, in, in celebrating this 25th anniversary, may I invite the great Michael to give me this, to give to him, and to both of us. Where's David Kosh? Koshy, you're the guy who undercovers con jobs. Can you do something from Sunrise for this con job? I came here to do a toast to uh, the Lansdowne Club members. That was my job. And I guess that's uh, what it's always been about. Thanks, guys. Um, We've had a great lunch. We've had a table of of the Prime Minister, the um, Leader of the Opposition, the Premier, and um, the, uh, the Premier next week. And uh, <laughs> I wonder, has that ever happened before? And how long will it take for it ever to happen again? But anyway, that's all about the Lansdowne Club. The whole thing has always been about the Lansdowne Club. The membership of the guys who make this happen, it's not we and the board just follow the formula, and uh, it works. So, guys, you got me. Um, I've still got a speech in my pocket. 
the only good thing is I didn't waste my own time writing it. Pasco wrote it for me. <laughs> so at least he had to do an extra bit of work. But I'm very privileged, honored to work with guys like I do. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, if you wonder what the Lansdowne Club is, it's Peter Brennan. <laughs>